It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. You can sing to I forget that. Hi, I'm Matt Moran. Welcome to Kitchen Tales. There's nothing I like more than catching up with mates Hi. while I cook for them in my kitchen. Cheers. And welcome. Thank you so much. I'm sure you'll agree it's where all the best stories are told. <laughs> she put a photo up of me and I think I had a ponytail. That was a long time ago. <laughs> Today I've invited a friend into my home to help prepare some of my favourite holiday recipes. That is some of the best bug you'll ever see. Look at the size of him. Wow. Look at that. So join us this Christmas in the kitchen. I can't wait to share kitchen tales with you. Next year. Next year, don't. Same place. Same place. <laughs> My next guest is a really dear friend of mine from one of Australia's most famous food families. In fact, her grandmother pretty much started Australia's love of cooking. The great, late Margaret Fulton. Welcome, Kate Gibbs. So nice to see Long you. Long time. Come and sit down. Welcome, Kate. So because we're doing seafood, I thought that we just had to use the best seafood in the world, which is in Tasmania. Yes. Mm. And I've got a real treat out the back in the freezer, which I'll show you later on. And we've got some beautiful salmon. Uh, you can see the, the fat content in that. You know that it's fantastic. So I know these guys are sustainable and they do all the right stuff and it, it looks amazing. So we're gonna salt cure that. We're gonna open some beautiful oysters with some, um, some dressings and I'm going to do something special that I'll show you a little bit later. How are you anyway? I'm really good. Yeah? Really I know good. we talk about your grandmother and, and what a, a very special lady she was, and I know that you were incredibly close with her and you spent a lot of, <laughs> lot of time in the kitchen with her, um, and now you're really making a, a name for yourself. Yeah, well, I think once you learn growing up that good food has to come yeah. at home, not just in beautiful restaurants like yours, you think, well, I, I sort of thought, well, I have to learn how to cook because otherwise I'm going to, mm. you know, be poor the rest of my life mm. in a sort of culinary sense. Mm. So I learned how to cook. But I learned quite late. Like, I was in my 20s. Really? But yeah, I was like, I remember I would have been about 21, living in London, and I knew how to do a roast chicken, yeah. but not all the other bits with it at the right time. When yeah, I got right. to London, I thought, I can have to, if I'm not going to be stuck with sort of Starbucks coffees for yeah. breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I'm going to have to do it yourself. Cook. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's what happens to a lot of people in life. I think uh, a lot of people actually don't really learn it as they're growing up, but they have to do it as a necessity because mm. they're they're on their own, or they leave home, or they go to university, or whatever they do, and they don't have someone looking after them as much, and they've they've got to learn those basics. Mm. Um, and I think everyone should know basics, you know, yeah. because it's it's important. I'm going to open some oysters to start with, um, and I just love these oysters. I with know. The, look, they've got the little Tassie mm, maps on, so they're, they're so proud of uh, how good their oysters are, so people actually know that they are, they actually brand them, so people know they're getting the right stuff. They're beautiful shells, they are, aren't they? they? Look at the weight of that. Yeah. Now this is my old oyster opener. Um, it's a little bit of uh, copper wow. with lead, with an old knife that's been ground, ground down. Wow. And a bit of garden hose and a bit of tape around yeah, it. That is like. <laughs> Feel the weight of that though. That is a beautiful looking knife. Right? I mean, you just can't buy these like this anymore with the garden hose you can't, on them. You can't buy them at all. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like shucking your own oysters, that to me is the epitome of perfect, Look at that. perfect food. I'm just gonna yeah. cut him open. And it's whether do you flip or not. Well, it looks pretty, and you're a restaurant yeah, that man. Oyster, so that is beautiful. That is so well shucked. But I remember, shucker, I'm a good shucker. I remember my grandfather, I used to go to his, he used to have oysters on the Georges River. And, um, and we used to go to his oyster shop. And the only oysters I ever used to like as a kid were smoked ones. Oh, and, like and from a jar. From a jar, or a tin. <laughs> and a tin, I remember him saying to me, and I say this all the time now, but it actually came from him. He says, you don't, as a kid particularly, you don't like your first oyster, mm. right? Because it's salty and you know, that, that mm. sort of briny flavor. But he said to me, he said, Matt, you'll understand when you get older, you don't like your first one, but you like your seventh one. And I, I asked him one day, I said, why did you say that? He said, because if you find someone that doesn't like an oyster, you give them an oyster every day to eat, by the time a week comes by, they actually love them because it's an acquired taste. I've done and that I, with most I've, foods. I've done that so many times and so true. 
Yeah. Are I you salty know. or are you, you sour, uh, sweet? Oh, I'm definitely, I'm sour. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm definitely salty. So? Even as a kid, I used to eat the olives my mum had put out. And I, you know, entertaining was about putting out a bowl of olives, yeah. stuffed olives. Yeah. But not with anchovies and like all the fancy things you get now. It was right. like the, the red, red, red pepper. Red peppers. Um, and I used to love those and I'd eat all those. Yeah, right. Um, I've also got you something else. This is just a little barra masalada that we make at Chiswick. Barra and masalada? Just, yeah, yeah, barra masalada. Like so barra. It's like tara masalada, but we smoke the, the barra mundi and then make it. It's oh, the best thing. Yeah. And also, I'm going to get you a drink. You want a drink? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. We've got a long day. Oh, nice. Um, okay. But uh, this is a, an Italian style sparkling. This is the, the Lyres Classica. And the great thing about this is it's a long day. And not for it's, me, I'm happy. I could sit here all day. No, yeah. it's, it's actually non alcoholic. And you would never know. Really? You know? Well, you know, if you're going to cook on Christmas Day, you want a little glass to start with, you know, it's nice just this to have some. This can be something. a breakfast champagne. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, this is something that I find really refreshing. <laughs> all right, so we've got our oysters. We've got half a dozen there. We've got lots to eat. And I'm just going to make a little mignonette sauce. They can be in front of you there. They are Beautiful. They are, aren't they? They're well such, such great oysters. I'm just got a, an echelot. Oh, I feel really spoiled. <laughs> right now, I could not be happier. <laughs> could not be happier? Beautiful. Well, Look I remember we had a trip, didn't we, to Tassie? You remember that one? Yeah, that was a fun trip. The was media it, trip. Was it the Taste of Australia. Taste yeah. of Australia, that's right. Right, so I'm just going to, a little bit of echelot, and I've got some, uh, some red wine vinegar. Yum. And... I'm just going to put a little bit of Tasmanian pepper in it, oh, no. just to uh, keep that Tassie flavour. So it's a mignonette Can I dressing. Smell it? Oh, it smells beautiful. I smell that. Oh yeah. Oh wow. So I'm trying to use everything Tassie. I'm going to get some of this. You can have that actually. Right, it's we're a just going to. Christmas present. Ah, uh, Christmas present. Did I give you the lid? No. No, yeah. Right, so I'm just going to put a little bit of... Oh, it's beautiful. I'd have that. I'd want that as candle or something. <laughs> That's why black, I'm the savoury. Black pepper flavor. candle. Should we do, do... Would you rather them with vinegar or not? What about we do half? Half and half? Yeah. Right. Whoever gets the extra one can. Right. How do you eat your oysters? I'm just going to eat one. Straight down. Mmm. I always tip upside down. Oh. That's a bloody good oyster, isn't it? I feel like I just went to Tasmania. Yeah. Went for a dive, <laughs> caught some oysters. It's um, it's that clean, pristine water, isn't it, really? And you can just it's taste like it. It's like the ocean. Yeah, it is. Uh, I'm going to have one with a mignonette. Oh, my gosh. Um, look at your mm. beautiful mignonette. I can see the mm. chopping skills there. Yum. What oh. about you? Were you into food when you were? No, I don't have a beautiful romantic story. About, you know, my mother and grandmother being phenomenal cooks, you know. Your children um, were well, though. Look, they were very old school. My nan, you know, roast, always overcooked. She used to do great puddings, you know, mm. rice pudding, um, you know, baked custards and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and mum and dad used to do a, not a bad roast, mm. but it was really a piece of protein, three vegetables. Now the salmon, all you can do is sugar, sugar cure. They are beautiful. So, it's a big salmon too. You wait until you see what I've got out the back. Um, Something very special. So we've just got a little bit of salt. And uh, this is like a gravlax, I suppose. I was about to say, I know what you're cooking. Yeah, so salt, sugar, um, and we're now we're just really putting flavouring into it. So I've got some, some spices, juniper, coriander, and black pepper. And what I'm gonna do is mortar and pestle that. What's to, what to you is the difference between doing vinegar water and pestle and just buying it pre? Oh, the romance, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I think that you know spices are always better when they're when they're whole, um, and particularly when they're whole, you can roast them first. You get that smell as well. I think you can also tell what it's well, going to smell like a bit more. I, all I'm getting thing. now is the juniper and the and the mm. and the and coriander seeds. You can smell it from there, can't you? Mm. It smells like Christmas. Yeah. Not and what do you do for Christmas? What do you What do you normally eat for Christmas? Well, funny you should say that because we do have grab lax. Do you? It's the definite, definite thing that's always definitely happening. Is and that if, right? And if two days before I realise no one else is on the, you know, full with it, then yeah. I'll then I'll do it. And it always varies. And who cooks? Is it your 
your mum, called, yourself? Yeah, it's traditionally been my mum and my yeah. grandmother, and they yeah. kind of would be just so sweet, put them away in the kitchen sort of days before. Christmas Day is one of my favourite days to cook. It's myself doing traditional. Mm -hmm. So I'll do a turkey, a ham, um, I used to get a Maggie beer goose, um, uh, or a duck, and and then have the stuffing and then just a couple of salads. And mm -hmm. a really good friend of mine who I've been having Christmas with for about 20 years, Michael Moore, who you know. Oh, yeah. And Michael brings all the seafood. Who was in Hobart with us. He was in Hobart with us. <laughs> so he brings, you know, prawns, um, a little bit of salmon, and sometimes we do a little bit of miso, and, um, and uh, crab, and we make little canapes and stuff like that. So he does that, and I do the traditional, and it's been going on now for, I think it's close to 20 years. Right. And nice. some dill. I might get you to give me some dill there, Kate. Do you want me to have pick it for you or just, no, just some? Give it, you just, want the bunchy just bit? Just a bunch and I'm just gonna chop it. Uh, I'm not no, used to you not know, pitching in. You know what? And and that's that's exactly what I want. I want to talk to you about food and Christmas and I'm cooking for you. This doesn't happen to me very often. You know, I've got some great stories about your grandmother. I thought um, you were gonna say about me. <laughs> I've plenty of those too, but I remember you, grandmother. Mm -mm. We had a conversation. I, I got on really well with her. I just adored her. She would have adored you. We were at an event once, and she saw me, and we started chatting. And then I watched her go around the tables and find my name and, and move whoever was sitting next to her, and swapped it. That's what I would do. <laughs> Haven't you noticed I do that at all the parties too? <laughs> do you notice how you're always sitting next to me? See, it runs in the oh, family. That's sweet. She's she was a sweet lady. Yeah, yeah she, she was. She was a very special, very special lady. So what what I normally do now is I I, I will cover the salmon, that's and so I'll actually this is a very small platter, but I cover it all up. And then what I do is put it in glad wrap and I wrap it. And I wrap it really tight. And what happens is that sugar and the salt will start to cook the, the flesh of the, the, the salmon itself. And it will start to, because it's got sugar in it, it will start to dissolve so it will become more liquid. And I normally do that for 24 hours. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to, I'm going to wrap that later. How beautiful. Doesn't it look like Christmas? I know, it the does, perfect doesn't Christmas it? dish. It does. And the smell as well. Yeah, you can smell that coriander. Mm. And this is one that I prepared earlier. So you saw yeah. the size of this is the other half. You can see how much it's shrunk. And yeah. it's obviously, you know, it started to um, to liquefy, but you can see get it's cooked. Mm. You know, it's, it's got that beautiful, beautiful colour. You get that bite to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm just gonna give that a bit of a rinse. Oh, that is my favourite thing to eat. You know what also I do with it? is I grate beetroot into it sometimes. Oh yeah, beautiful. And so the, the outside of it goes red. And do you think it flavours it too? Or yeah, it, it does. It does, a little, it does a little bit, but it's also the look. the earthiness. Yeah. Beautiful. I'm going to make a beetroot salad, actually. Mm. There's a couple of ways you can cut it. Is just from there, cut it all the way down until you hit the, you actually hit the skin, but you don't mm -hmm. cut through it. And then you just cut nice slices. Can I try some of this, Matt? Your barrel slices. Of course you can. Oh, when I do this, I'm just going to go down and cut it off the skin. And then what we do? Gosh, that is it's very the easiest. It's the easiest way to to cut it. How's wow, that look? look at Mine doesn't look like this, Matt. <laughs> Mine looks so um, much more um, fluid. Fluid? <laughs> fluid. <laughs> um, mine's like a sort of Pollock painting. Like a know? Pollock painting everywhere. Yeah. And I've left some room on the bottom here, and I'll show you why. A couple more pieces there. I can do that later. It's a beautiful. So I'd wrap that back up again, mm -hmm. and then and just keep using it day after day after day. It's like the Christmas that keeps dish giving. That keeps giving. I've got a boiling pot here which is boiling and I've had my little mate over here who's been in the freezer and he's gone to sleep and we're going to put him in but wait until you see the size of this. Oh my goodness uh, look at that beautiful thing. Look at the size of him. Wow. And he's completely he's half frozen so he's, he's definitely he's definitely gone to sleep so it's the humane way and I'm just going to put him in. I reckon that's the biggest rock lobster I've ever cooked. And in my world, there is no question that Tassie rock lobsters are the best in the world. No one will ever question that. You think of the, the where they've 
obviously come from the pristine waters and, and beautiful cold waters, but also the, the meat ratio to shell is so much better than, than any other lobster. My goal in life one day is to go down there and dive. I don't care how cold it is and actually catch my own own lobster. Jump off a boat and do it. Jump off a boat, go down and, and grab one. That'd be really special. Yeah, absolutely. Well, look at the, look at the colour of that. It's stunning. It's, it's always a little bit uh, brighter red than most lobsters. And that water was boiling when you put it, it was, in. So it, was it was so like... boiling, yeah. yeah. Wow. Um, it's curled up quite a bit, but I, I don't need the head so much. So if it's a little bit undercooked in the head, I can always cook it a bit more. I will do something with that. I'll make a bisque. Um, we never have any wastage. And I'll, I'll use the tail for us. I got a little treat, which is nothing to do with seafood, but I thought we have to have a bit of a salad. It smells really good. It smells sweet. It, it does smell sweet, but it also smells earthy. It's uh, beetroot. I that was just you. <laughs> You're going to cut all this out. <laughs> You're embarrassing me. Oh yeah, the, the blushing chef. I'm blushing. Um, and I've got beautiful different colours. Oh, look at that. So they've just been roasted and roasted. You can always put some herbs and stuff in there. But I'm going to let them sit and cool down. And oh, then I'm, I'm going to... Um, I'm going to make a little salad. I've got some goat's curd here, tazzy goat's curd. How beautiful. And some rocket lettuce, which is really simple. This is obviously big leaf, which is first growth. Because when you rocket grows, I don't know whether you know this. No, you probably I don't do. know this. When rocket first grows, it grows really big, and that's what we call big leaf rocket. Mm. And when you do the first pick, it comes back smaller and it comes back pepperier. Oh. So it's got a different flavour also. I did not know So that. I'm just putting some gloves on. Um, obviously beetroot will stain. Look at that. Yeah, gorgeous. So that just slips right off. Yeah. Yum. And it's, it's kind of like they roast, but they steam at the same time. Mm. In their own skin. Yeah. And it saves peeling them which is the worst job of Christmas, don't you think? Oh, Feeling stuff. Stuff. Smell that. Isn't that just the best? So beautiful. That earthy smell is really yeah. coming through, which will go beautifully with the goat cheese. Goat's and the rocket. And that's, that I'm just going to make, and then I'm going to make a, like a classic mm. um, dressing, which uh, mustard and, and uh, beautiful tassie honey, actually. And that's also what Tassie's known for, the beautiful honeys. Oh, yeah. And what are you up to now? You, you've been doing this incredible podcast. Yeah, thank you. Um, which I and was you were guest on. guest number four or five, I Four think. or five. And how many have you done now? About 17. There was a wow. bit of a hiatus then. Yeah. Because I was doing them in person, as you know, because yeah, I yeah, yeah. in person. Yeah. And then, obviously, you know, there was nothing happening in person. Yeah. Was he? But, yeah, Dish, it's called. Yeah, Dish yeah. With like I think one of the reasons why I did it was because I was missing people and yeah, yeah. wanted that connection and yeah. wanted to just sort of talk about food. I mean, sitting here with you and sitting with a chef, I love nothing more than talking about food. That's how I was raised. Yeah, 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 we didn't yeah. sit around the dinner table and talk sport. I didn't. I don't even know what sport is what, <laughs> but I know I know food things. Yeah, right. I'm just going to make a dressing, Kate. I'm going to leave the beetroot there. Put a little bit of mustard in there. This is just like a classic vinaigrette. Same honey as mustard, white wine vinegar. It's pretty rough and ready here. It looks beautiful. I you love my kitchen. You can smell the leatherwood actually. You can, can't you? Yeah, leatherwood honey's got that quite distinctive taste. So I'm gonna bring him out now. And uh, he's had about 12 minutes, I reckon. Oh, he's really beautiful. Look at that. Really Whoa. beautiful. He looks like a proper lobster now. Look at that. Wow, look at that. Wow, isn't he beautiful? I'm just going to cool. Amazing creature. Yeah, he is. So I'm going to put my rocket everywhere, all right? There's a lot of it. And my beetroot's still warm, so it might sort of just oh. wilt it a little bit, but that's all right. Cut them into quarters. And you're right, you know how you talked about before? When they're baked and they haven't been boiled, they get that mm, stickiness to it. Stickiness is beautiful, I can see it. So I'm just gonna put a bit of pepper on that beautiful and just dress it. Salad. That's just gonna melt a little bit. I'm just gonna put a bit more pepper and I'm gonna put heaps of salt. That goat's curd. That's really good so goat's curd. Beautiful. So our lobster's there, he's cooled down. Um, now to put in the middle of it, we're gonna, I'm gonna get a little bit of chili, a bit of avocado. <gasps> you know, when you think of Christmas, you think of mangoes, don't you? Now, look at this southern Tasmanian rock lobster. That is insane, isn't it? Beautiful. Now, the best way to take him off 
is because it's got spikes on it. Just twist him out. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, I hate to say that. That is cooked beautifully. It's cooked perfect, isn't it? Yeah. I'm going to cut this in half. Maybe you should do it. We should do it quick, quick. I can write the recipes down for you. <laughs> you can do the recipes and I can just yeah. what? Do the yeah. cooking? Yeah, the actual cooking. All the work. Look at that. Wow, it's like a pro it's a proper lobster, isn't it? It's yeah, no sort it's of messing just, around. I'll just give you a little bit here. It's really, really soft. Oh yeah. And tender. Mm. God, that's you good. have cooked that perfectly, <laughs> haven't you? Like it's perfect. That's why I get paid the big money. Yeah, huh? that's it. You don't get it wrong. <laughs> yes, you can see that bit there. Look how perfect that is. Yeah. See, it's a little bit under there, and that yeah. to me is just yeah. the best. Because really, like people eat lobster sashimi. I mean, yep. I would, would yep. prefer like this, but and that's, it's that's not going to kill you. That's is the it? great thing about lobster. If it is a little bit um, undercooked, yeah. who cares? Mm. You know, Gosh, that's amazing stuff. It's when you overcook it that you have issues. It reminds me texturally of like a really perfect lychee. You know, yeah, it's right. Got that almost like, yeah. not, maybe not as firm, but it's got that, there's, it's juicy, but it's also, and it's got that bite, but it's still really soft. That is beautiful. Oh, yum. And leave that there. Put one shell and like that. Yin and yang, is it? Oh. Right, so I'm just gonna cut that into chunks. It's still a little bit warm, which is fine. That tail gets a little bit tough. Mm -hmm. I'm going to leave them in the chunks. I'm just going to whack that in the salad. So is this, would you get a southern rock lobster for Christmas yourself? Yeah, like yeah. Always? always. Michael always brings uh, the southern rock lobster and uh, fresh lime. Lots of it over the top. And I've got some really good Aussie mm. olive oil there, which is nice and rich, and just lather it. Oh my God, yeah. Mix it all. That just is the epitome of Australia. It is, isn't it? Mango, avo, <laughs> chili. <laughs> You've got all the O's. <laughs> That's right. You know, Lobo. <laughs> Lobo. <laughs> all right. So that, I reckon, is I just fill it up as much as I can. I don't think it's all going to fit, you know that. You know, I have a thing with Christmas. Why I, you, why I cook so much stuff at Christmas time is it's between Christmas and New Year that I get really excited about. Yeah. And it's all about, you know, the leftover, you know, lobster for a salad. It's the leftover, you know, salmon that's been cured. It's the leftover ham that you make croque monsieur mm. or toasties. Um, it's the leftover turkey, you know, mm. and stuffing. And to me, that, that's the week covered with food. Totally. It's the most exciting time and potentially the yeah. hungriest if you're not careful. I'm just going to do... It's so nice. I'm just going to do one more. The texture is so good. It's good, isn't it? And it's mm. that olive oil. It's just coated the, mm. the thing. That's I couldn't, great I couldn't, olive oil. I couldn't get enough lime. And then that's our, our final dish. Look at your beautiful platter as well. <laughs> it's like a true Australian sort of look. We're going to go over the table and we're going to eat. Oh my God, I nice romantic so dinner smiled. for two. Yeah. <laughs> How beautiful. What an amazing feast. Look at this. Right, a little bit more Classico, Lies Classico. Oh, thank you. I like that you can't kind of overdo it. Can't overdo it. But yeah, you can drink sparkling. You know, you kind of feel as though I've never done it with yours. I know it's non alcoholic. Because I'm so much fun. You are so much fun. <laughs> um, should we do one? Oh, you win again. No. <laughs> What's in it? A million dollars. I can't believe it. Yeah, right. <laughs> a party hat. A party hat. A joke. Gotta love a party. I love the jokes. What are the jokes? Oh, they're always high quality. Um, what did the... See, <laughs> I'm getting like this now. Um, what did the Christmas tree say to the decoration? I don't know. Aren't you tired of hanging around? Oh, God. <laughs> um, all right. Now I'm going to Oh, I that. also got... Dominoes. Dominoes? We can play that later. Play that later. <laughs> Do you want to move your, uh, your little thing? What a beautiful table. Thank you so much. A little bit of creme fraiche. Yes, please. It's the only way to eat it, I reckon. Yeah. And it's that stickiness to it, which I love. For that colour as well. Yeah. Um, very well picked. 
dill. Very well. <laughs> Some beetroot. Thanks. Oh. Thank and you. what are, we, are you going to have half a lobster, or are you just going to have little bits and pieces of it? Go on, go for half a lobster. Should I just put the whole thing in my plate? Yeah, I reckon. I didn't want to seem greedy, but obviously half. No, you can do whatever you like. I'm going to grab mine. Wow. Oh my goodness, this is luxury. It's a feast, isn't it? <gasps> Yum. Oysters still there. So beautiful. Right, Thank well, you. Pleasure. Merry Christmas. So good to see you. <laughs> yeah, it's so nice, isn't it? I feel I feel very spoiled. You know, it's, it's inspired me for, for things this year. I'm definitely going to do that beetroot salad. And I'm definitely going to do lobster like that. And definitely grab lax. Mm. This, I'm so lucky to be here. Thank you. Pleasure. Thanks for coming. Next year? Next year, done. Same place? Same place. Okay. Just like now, it's going to be a thing every year. Totally. It is. I've scheduled it.